Hey guys, Wendell reporting in. We're going to take a look at a B-85 based motherboard today. If motherboards were starships, this would probably be a Defiant class motherboard. The ASRock B-85 Killer. This is part of their Fatality series. Now, the interesting thing with this motherboard is that it's not a Z87 chipset. It's actually the B85 chipset. Now, you may be saying, wait, wait, wait. This is a Haswell SOC 1150 motherboard, right? You know, what? what's with the B85 chipset? Why not Z87? Well, the B85 chipset was created by Intel um, for businesses, uh, ostensibly. It's a, it's a low-cost, uh, economical uh, chipset that's aimed at business class users that don't need all the bells and whistles of a Z87 chipset. But... ASRock has taken this chipset and sort of built it into their Fatality platform, so that's pretty interesting. And that's also maybe a hint that they're getting something out of this motherboard, out of this chipset, that maybe Intel didn't intend. You know, Intel says that the Z87 chipset is the only chipset that supports overclocking. But as we're going to see, we were actually able to get our Intel i7-4770K running at 4.6 gigahertz on this motherboard. But more about that in a minute. So let's take a look at the features. Now, this is an ATX form factor motherboard. It's a full ATX. Um, they advertise that it's got premium gold capacitor design, 100% Japanese made high quality conductive polymer capacitors. Um, the sound is purity sound. This is a, apparently an ASRock thing. It's based on a Realtek chipset. Um, the, uh, thing that, the other thing that ASRock advertises is their gaming armor. Um, so, you know, high density power connector for the CPU. Um, it's got a durable uh, PCI Express connector with 15 micrometers of, of gold. Um, the Qualcomm Atheros Killer LAN. Now, they've opted to use this instead of the Intel LAN, but it's part of their killer network series, the E2200. We'll get to more about that in a minute. So, the motherboard, as I said, supports the fourth generation Intel Core i7, i5, i3, Xeon, you know, whatever in the LJ1150 package. Check the website for full motherboard compatibility. It's a digital power design, it's a six power phase design, and it supports Intel Turbo Boost 2.0. Um, it's got four DDR3 DIMM slots for 1600, 1333, and 1066 non ECC unbuffered operation. Um, the maximum amount of system memory is 32 gig. It also supports the Intel Extreme Memory Profile XMP. So even though it's not a Z87 chipset, you know, you can still use the XMP options up to 1600 megahertz. Now, the PCI Express configuration is a little odd. There's two physical by 16 slots, but the first one is by 16 and the second one's by 4. Now, you need to pay attention because if you're planning on running NVIDIA SLI on this motherboard, it's not going to work because NVIDIA SLI requires by 8. This second slot, the second PCI Express slot, is only by 4. So you're only going to get AMD Crossfire. Um, this is something to be aware of. Uh, it's also got two more uh, PCI Express 2.0 by 1 slots. The motherboard does have onboard graphics connectors at the back of the uh, motherboard. It's got one DVI, one uh, HDMI, and one VGA D sub connector. It does support triple monitor. Um, only the HDMI supports a 4K display, though. The DVI connector is 1920 by 1200 limitation, and the uh, uh, D sub is limited to 1920 by 1200 as well. Um, it does support, you know, all the other Intel features like quick sync and things like that. Those are really CPU features, um, but they're not hobbled by the chipset or anything like that. I mean, with Intel, you really got to be careful because, you know, technically other things support ECC and, you know, Intel loves to play games with stuff like that. So it never hurts to check. The audio is a 7.1 channel codec. It's the Realtek ALC 1150. Um, it's got premium Blu-ray audio support. Uh, it's a 115 dB signal to noise ratio. Uh, DAC with a differential amplifier. It also has a premium headset amplifier and supports up to 600 ohm headsets. That's kind of important. Um, direct drive technology and EMI shielding and PCB isolation shielding. So this PCB, the motherboard, has the separation to have the uh, audio components on a separate part of the PCB from the rest of everything else. It also supports a DTS connect and has an optical connector at the back of the motherboard. Also at the back panel, you've got four USB uh, 2.0 ports, a PS2 port, and two USB 3 ports. And the motherboard also has a USB 3.0 header for front panel USB 3 as you'll find in modern cases, so you'll definitely want to take advantage of that. Elsewhere on the motherboard you will also find two more USB 2.0 headers so you can get four more USB ports if you have a breakout so your case supports it. So let's try this out in the system real quick. 
The first thing that I noticed uh, with the post is ASRock has really got their act together with the UEFI. The UEFI was really clean, it was really well organized. Um, the first thing that I went to do was do the overclock. So we've got a chip that we know can hit 4.8. Let's go in and just do the easy button overclock solutions. In this case, it's overclock 3.0 in the, in the menu and see if we can hit 4.6, or 4.6 is what the option came up as. Now this is loading a clock rate of 4.6, but the cache is keeping it at 3.8, which is pretty, you know, that's pretty aggressive, um, but we know this chip can do it, and we're actually gonna go ahead and modify the cache ratio to be uh, 4.6 as well. So we're gonna reboot and see if it works. Now, while we're waiting for the system to come up, um, we can talk about some of the other features in the BIOS, which is kind of nice. Um, it's got ASRock Instant Flash. You can actually flash um, directly from the internet. Uh, if you've got the, the LAN plugged in, you've got a DHCP server on your LAN so that you know it can get on. It's got a dehumidifier function. If you if you're, don't have your machine on very much, um, it can power on the machine periodically, which will cause the machine to heat up, which will dehumidify it, which is kind of interesting. Um, in North America, I don't really think that's much of a feature, but in other parts of the world, the, that's probably pretty handy. Um, ASRock Fast Boot, ASRock Restart to UEFI, um, Good Night LED. It's uh, it, it will turn off unessential LEDs, so you can have your machine on, but actually shut down the LEDs so that uh, you can keep your machine running. But you know, if it's in a bedroom or something like that, it's not going to keep you awake with the light. Um, so that's pretty neat. You've also got a a fan tuning option. Um, from the BIOS. The other thing on the motherboard is that there are ample fan connectors. It was really nice to see that. You know, this is this is ostensibly a budget motherboard, but it's got quite a few fan connectors, which is really nice. And there we have it. We're in Windows. 4.6 gigahertz processor. Oh yeah. That's really impressive. I mean, this is a B85 chipset. This chipset was not designed for this, and it's working, and it's working. It seems to be working well so far. We'll test it out and let you guys know. But um, this is really cool. I always like it when things are used in ways that are not intended. All the way back to, you know, the Celeron 300A days. It's a, it's a processor from Intel. It was Celeron. It was meant to be bottom of the barrel. But you could overclock the crap out of those processors, and, and it was amazing. And so you can overclock with this chipset, and it's a business class chipset. So it's not, you know... It's business class, so it should be pretty stable. But ASRock have managed to get these features out of it, so it's kind of nice. You guys should definitely take a look at it. Well, that's been the ASRock Fatality B85 Killer. This is a solid value. If you're looking for a, a budget gaming rig, I really think you ought to take a look at this motherboard and see what it's all about. Um, we're going to do some more stuff with it and report back. So if you guys have any ideas or you want to see more, you know, rate, subscribe, comment below. Until next time.